Hey guys, I'm back today with a video about reviews and Etsy feedback extortion and how to respond to reviews on Etsy, how to respond to a bad review. You know, I mean, it's the bad reviews that people freak out about. Everybody's going to get a bad review at some point. You have to just accept that. It's how you respond to it publicly that matters. But before I get into that, go ahead and subscribe if you're interested in Etsy content, because I do put out a lot of Etsy videos and on e-commerce videos, home-based business, that kind of thing. Hit the notifications bell also, because that's going to guarantee you that you get told when I put new videos up. So as we're talking about Etsy reviews, Etsy reviews matter a lot. And at one point, they were talking about what the average review rate is on Etsy. And I want to say it's something around 8%. It's very low. So if you don't get a review with every single order, that's kind of to be expected because not everybody leaves reviews, but you do want to pursue customers to a certain extent to get reviews. You, you want reviews to be coming in on a regular basis because they do count towards your shop quality rating. They count towards your um, listing quality and your seller quality rating. And those things do exist and they do affect your search placement. They also count towards your ODR score, which is order dissatisfaction rate. Now, the ODR score is a score that Etsy keeps track of. And if you get a certain number of negative reviews in a certain like a certain amount of orders, it's, it's reviews versus orders, not reviews versus reviews. So if you get one or two negative reviews for 100 orders, Etsy might contact you and say your score is too high and we need to work with you. And if you persist in getting bad reviews and not taking care of your customer service issues, they can close your shop. So you want to make sure that you're familiar with that system. And there is a link where you can see your ODR score. As I'm recording this, they're not paying too much attention to it because they know that the pandemic is going on and it's affecting a lot of people's shipping times and people are having a lot more negative reviews more than usual. So the ODR score isn't quite as important right now, but it will be in the future. You basically want to make sure that your reviews are coming in on a regular basis. And if you're not getting reviews, it doesn't hurt to ask the customer to leave you one. Now, Etsy does send out emails that say to the customer, come back and review your thing. And they also have a little notification that shows up on the desktop when the customer comes back in after purchasing something that says, leave a review. So you don't want to harass people. You don't want to send too many messages saying, can you leave me a review? But it doesn't hurt to put a note in the box with the item you know, say, please, if you like this, then please give me a review. I appreciate it. It helps out my shop. And customers will respond to that. You can also send them a convo that has the link to the purchases and reviews page. And you can use the link from your account. And if they're logged into their account, that will take the customer directly to their purchases and reviews. So you don't have to worry about them going to your page, but they'll, they'll go to their page. And that's helpful because a lot of customers don't know where to go to leave a review. So if you send them that link and they get that, they can click on it, go directly to it. They don't have to hunt around for it and they're more likely to leave you a review. Now, when you're talking about feedback extortion, Etsy feedback extortion, okay, feedback extortion is basically when someone says, I got this order and unless you do X, Y, Z, I'm going to leave you a bad review. So they're basically using that as you know blackmail against you to try to give a refund or give them a new product or whatever it is. That's against Etsy's terms of service. It's in the handbook. And if you get a message like that, what you need to do is forward it directly to Etsy. There is a way that you contact Etsy. If you go down to the bottom of the first page of the homepage of Etsy, it says contact us. You can go and send this message to Etsy. If you're not sure how to do that, join my Facebook group that's linked in the description. And there are many people there who can help you because people ask for advice in that group all the time. We can hook you up with the correct email address to send it to. But you want to let Etsy know that this Etsy feedback extortion is happening before that customer actually posts a negative review. That way you're kind of protecting yourself and you're just giving them a heads up about that coming. Now, many times a bad review is just left without the customer even contacting you. In those cases, what you can do is contact the customer and say, I saw your review. Is there anything I can do to help you? I didn't know that there was a problem. What can I do to make you happy or whatever? However you want to phrase it. Sometimes people just don't even respond. They leave a review and they're done. They're mentally over it. They don't want to interact with you. Now, customers can go in and change the reviews. So if you do go and talk to a customer who's left a bad review and you solve the problem, sometimes they will go in and change the review. Just recently that happened to me and the lady who left the bad review went and changed it. And in the review, she said, I didn't know how the Etsy system worked. The seller made it right and I'm changing my review. Okay, so she just didn't know how the Etsy system worked. She didn't know that she could contact me first. 
So that does happen sometimes. And if you know, if you contact people and ask them in a helpful way, don't be don't accuse them of trying to rip you off, but just ask them in a helpful way if you can help them and solve their problem, then maybe they're going to come and change the review. They might not change the review, though. That's the problem. So even if you help them, if you give them a refund, if you send them a replacement, if you fix the problem, they might not change that review. You know, and never, never write to someone and say, please change your review, please. And don't, don't beg, don't demand, don't be obnoxious. All right. Because they can change the review if they want to, but they don't have to. So if after a certain amount of time, you feel like they're not going to change the review or you've contacted them and they said they will and then they don't. You can respond publicly to a one, two, or three-star review on Etsy. Once you do that, though, it locks the review in so the customer cannot change it, and you can't go back and edit your response. You can delete your response, but you can't edit it. So be very careful what you say when you lock in a review on Etsy. Now, you cannot respond to a four- or five-star review because those are good Four and five star reviews are good reviews. I've seen people freak out when they get a four star review. There's no reason to freak out. That's a good review. Okay, so just don't worry about four star reviews. If you respond to a three star review, a two star review, or a one star review, make it professional. The other day I was looking at bad reviews on Etsy, and I mean bad based on the way that the seller responded. And I was dying because there are some reviews on Etsy that are responded to in such an incredibly rude way that any customer that comes behind the review being posted and responded to and reads that is not going to buy from those shops. It's crazy. Well, I mean, there were sellers calling buyers liars. They're saying karma's going to get you. I mean, insulting their intelligence. It was really, really bad. So you need to be careful when you post a response to a, a, a review, but you also shouldn't ignore bad reviews because that just makes people who come behind and read it think, well, this seller didn't even care to respond. They must not be paying attention. And that's the point is that when you respond to a review, it's not to talk to the customer who left the review. It's to talk to every customer who's coming along next, who's going to read that review and your response. So for example, let's say that there was someone who left you a low review, then you fix the problem and they don't change it. You can go in within 100 days. That customer has 100 days to change the review. And if you leave a low review sitting there, after a while, people start to see that and they say, well, there's no response. This customer or this, this seller must not care about customer service. Respond professionally and ask someone else to read your response before you post it. That's probably the safest thing because a lot of times when you post something, because like I said, you can't change it. So if you post a response that sounds snippy or angry or anything like that, it's not going to look good when people come along and read it later. And you can just go in and say the problem was resolved. You know, even if they have posted a one-star review. If people see that, then they know that you came along and took care of the problem. Just as long as the people who are reading the reviews later see that, yes, you do care about somebody who had a bad experience and you did try to help them and you say clearly what you did to help them, you don't have to get personal. You don't have to accuse the customer of trying to scam you. You don't have to accuse the customer of being an idiot. I'm just trying to think of, I'm, I'm thinking of these reviews that I was reading the other night because some of them were incredibly rude. But just remember that the responses that you post are for potential customers. They're not for the customer who's complaining. They're for the people who are coming along, along behind who are going to be reading that to see what your customer service is like. So as far as Etsy review extortion goes, you can also tell a customer to stop contacting you. If someone is really harassing you about feedback extortion or just threatening you and trying to give you a, a a bad time online, you can tell them, please do not contact me anymore based on Etsy's terms of service. I do not want to hear from you. And if they continue to contact you, you just mark their conversations as spam. Etsy will see that and contact Etsy and say, they're, they're still harassing me. Etsy will take care of it. They don't want that happening on Etsy. Here's the pro tip. One thing you can do to get more good feedback is when you send the item to the customer, put a little note in there that says, please post a picture with your review because I love to see the items in use. For me, I can say I love to see the final product because I, I do, I like to see the cakes that people make with my stuff. They can post a picture using the app, but they can only post a picture if it's a five-star review. So you cannot post a picture if it's a four-star review or below, but for a five-star review, you can post a picture. And if you say, please let me know if you have any problems so that I can help you, chances are they won't leave a review until they contact you if they do have a problem. 
problem. So if you thought this video was helpful, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. It does help the channel out. And subscribe, like I said, because I do post a lot of Etsy videos and tips and e-commerce stuff. And join the Facebook group. I mentioned that before, but it's a good group. The link is in the description down below. And I will talk to you guys later.